Hello once again, welcome to our Let's Play video blogcast thing. I'm Awak. I'm Gamadev. And uh, we're continuing through Monster Manor. Uh, I should probably hold the controller for this. Uh, and I didn't realize until well after we'd finished our last giant outsized one that we are halfway through the game. Like, last one we finished was level six, so now we're... Yay! Yay! So, just another... Well... Let's go, Speedy. Let's get through. <laughs> uh, so I actually um, played a little bit of this map earlier because um, I don't want to die again. And, and You know, there's this thing called compression of time through editing that you can do. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, well, if, if I'm going to do that, then I would pre-record well, okay. a level and yes. then we'd comment over that like we did. Ah, with the... This is the contractor... Uh stop showing up level i guess <laughs> <laughs> uh, i believe this is the one of the cave grotto like yes. levels come on over here ah, but I, yeah i kind of barely remember this one <laughs> where the wallpaper kind of looks like a, a painting from manos the hands of fate <laughs> for you mystery science theater fans out there <laughs> oh hi there hey you're back hi there I'm gonna go. Oops. So this was actually you were asking about like lack of keys, um, how, running out of keys, and so this is an example of one of the things that I tried to verify when we were going through the levels before we shipped, is that every room that was like cl close closed by doors had at least one key, so that you could open at least one door, so that there was always a key waiting for you whenever you entered a new space. Ah. And another thing that I remembered is that um, there was actually a guy at Electronic Arts who made one or two of the maps. And I, unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I can't remember who, who he was. But uh, yeah, well, it wasn't just us. So how do you make the levels? On just like graph paper, or I mean, no, um, did the letter? No, there's a um, actually it was come here. I can see you. I know you're there. Uh, make them in a text editor. Okay. Um, yeah. The first, in fact, I should have. I'll, 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 I'll like load up some imagery and and key it in over. But basically, there's a text file that uh, names the background music the color of the ceiling and the floor, and then a 64 by 64 grid of character cells. It's basically 64 lines, each one 64 characters wide, that uh, specifies what each cell on the map is, whether it's a wall or uh, a monster or a coin, uh, as the case may be. And, uh, and so this let the artists just um, put together maps very easily in, in the uh, text editor of their choice. Um, actually, in the case of case of because uh, so, we were all on Max, I think we used a thing called um, what did we use? Ah, but yeah, it was all it was a text editor, uh, and I, and I gave them a, 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 a cheat sheet explaining. Do I need that yet? Uh, explaining what each so if you put down the letter A capital A then you would get a wall a solid wall and if you put down like the letter I'm, I'm grasping here I'd have to look at the cheat sheet myself uh, if you put down like the letter N that would be um, sort of like a, a, a not really a transparent wall but sort of like one of those um, frames okay like, or one of those great, uh, like, like with like, the bars or whatever. Uh, yeah, like the, uh, you know, like a some, something framing the hallway. Okay. In fact, you'll see you'll, you'll see something like that uh, later on in this level. Uh, let's see. So what's down here? Okay. As I said, I played played this a little earlier. So are you what? So. Are you, so is the player walking in basically the empty spaces, and then the walls are yep. filled in? So yeah, so you fill you fill in the walls. So base, that's actually how 
most of the the map makers uh, st started with their maps is that they um, they just like filled in where they wanted walls so that they could uh, so they would have a, a general idea of what the layout of the the floor plan would be and then they would um, and then once that once they were satisfied with that then they would populate it with uh, you know different wall textures so is this store is this still stored as a text file on the uh... yes it is the so somebody could so uh, you could homebrew this and uh, yes they could swap out the textures and uh... well that's part of it um, you would also have to create and a new image uh, you would also have to create a new file a new loaf file as I called it um, uh, actually that was something I was discussing er earlier uh, this weekend um, so this was a 2x CD-ROM right and there's easily you know like a couple dozen pieces of artwork individual pieces of artwork that need to be loaded uh, to uh, create to to have the map available if you were to open each file off the CD-ROM one at a time it, you could easily take a minute just to load the artwork files small you know small as small as they are right um, so let's go for 90 there. Uh, so I said, okay, so the easiest way to do this is to collect them all into one file and then load them all in one go. Ah! Okay. Yeah. I mean, everybody's And so that I too. created my own file, I created my own file format and I named it LOAF, which stands for AWACS own opera format. Like, yeah. Yeah. AWACS own opera format. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't worry about the L. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, so, a total conversion. It was possible for people uh, on because I've seen I've seen finally there's now starting to be homebrew on the 3DO where people have done stuff like. No kidding. Uh, they've modded um, need like Need for Speed so that it ah. runs at a, it, it does the exaggerated speed that they did like on the PlayStation version. I never saw the PlayStation version. Well, basically they. Well, okay, that's kind of just a story. So, Need for Speed comes out around the same time as Ridge Racer did ah, on, yeah. the, on the, the PS1. I remember um, Martin H. Um, mm -hmm. and us going to the company meeting that Friday. They had a, a PlayStation set up and they had a um, 3DO set up side by side. 3DO was playing Need for Speed and the, the PlayStation was playing uh, Ridge Racer because it was like the only game you had for the mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> They too had an early software problem. Oh, but here, here's, but, here's an example of an archway, right. like a, a it's it's parses as a wall, but it's not really so. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I remember Martin's reaction to it was, "Oh, we got nothing to worry about," because Need for Speed looked a lot better than Ridge Racer. But mm -hmm. you know, I guess people like the arcadiness, you know, of that thing. It was a very short game, even you know, uh, didn't have the X Man and all that stuff. Uh, the little FMV guy who like would taunt you after the race. Uh, I remember him. Yeah. He's like, yeah. shoulder. Can we talk about shoulder for a second? Like, if you would drive on the shoulder excessively. Oh. Like he'd say, yep, yeah, it's flat. You'll drive on it. You know, it was like one of my one of my favorite videos. I didn't get it, but I, <laughs> I that game I actually showed to my mom, mm -hmm. and she loved playing Need for Speed. Oh. Not to race, but she just like a the, the casual driving and knocking down road signs. <laughs> she took it upon herself to like try and knock down every single road sign that she could because she actually does not drive in real life. She's, oh, yeah, she never got a driver's license, so she, she just. Right. See, I was like, thinking that it might have been a good thing after seeing her drive Need for Speed, but like that was the video she got at the end of it. It's like, yep, shoulder, you'll drive on if it's flat. And I, <laughs> I just laughed like crazy when I saw it. But anyway, so. But of course, Ridge Racer was considered a huge success for PlayStation, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. so when the uh, Need for Speed came out for the PlayStation, they massively dumbed it down. They got rid of X Men. They got rid of I think all oncoming traffic is gone in the PlayStation version. Really? They cranked up the speed. They exaggerated the speed. And a lot of people said, "Well, look how much more powerful the, the PlayStation is. It's running. At, you know this incredible. You know, look how much faster it's running." It's like. No, the car's just going faster. It's not really running at a big, much higher frame rate. The other way they got rid of the frame rate was they took away the uh, and the sense of speed was they took away. They had a mode for turning off the uh, the dashboard, hmm. and you actually could do that in the 3DO as just well. Just to reduce rendering, so they get yeah. There was that, and also it, because the camera then you saw the road going whipping past mm -hmm. you much closer to the bottom. It also gave that illusion of being a much higher speed mm -hmm. because you could see the you know 
the road going by much right. faster as opposed to most of the in the distance when it's in the dash cam view. And there was actually a cheat code on the 3DO to do that, to actually hide the dash. But they just made that as just one of their default cycle camera options on the PlayStation. So the hmm. PlayStation had this, uh, Need for Seed had this reputation of, at the time it came out, as being, you know, old, you know, it's much faster than the 3DO version. It's like, well, yeah, it's more arcadey than the 3DO version. They kind of abandoned the whole uh, sim, Driving sim, you know, oh, yeah. and mm -hmm. that wouldn't be seen again until, like, you know, Gran Turismo or something like that on the PlayStation. So... So somebody went back and they kind of they they hacked up the the 3DO binary mm -hmm. and gave it that exaggerated sense of speed. You know, it lets you go much faster than the car physics allow for, and also uh, the the dashboard thing and a few other little tweaks. And then they published it as an ISO um, because well, you know you know somebody's figured out the 3DO encryption finally. E yeah, well, forever. did they actually crack the key or did they find a bug? No, they brute forced it. Okay. Well, it gee, it only took them two decades. I mean, <laughs> that's about what they were uh, guaranteeing, I think. Yeah. RSA. Those, those wacky Russians. Um, you know, <laughs> they just yeah, they just brute forced the encryption key as, as far as I know. Before there, people had had a little bit of success, like taking um, an existing 3D game and kind of fooling it. Oh, is this and, like replacing sectors that it wasn't going to scan? Something like that. They, yeah. Somebody figured out like it only, there was like certain things that it would only check from startup, it wouldn't check the whole disk or whatever, obviously. Right. So there's just a few things, and so people have figured out like how to take like Game Guru hmm. and modify, you know, because Game Guru is just a really tiny little app. Yes. <laughs> On, you know, most of the disk is empty, it's got, you know, a bunch of you know, got a bunch of music files. Music files, demo videos, stuff like that. Just kind of Easter eggs all over the thing. But mm -hmm. the actual program is really small, so people have figured out like how to modify that to stick their whole game in there, keep the parts that the the boot thing checked on, namely mm -hmm. the actual Game Guru app, and then just like kind of branch when they launch the thing. So it has like it actually still has the Game Guru like splash screen and everything. Oh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was, that was like their one way net. But people eventually figured out how just to do the the regular signing. So. Well, good. So hopefully there'll be more of a 3DO homebrew scene in the future. And the first step would be something like, hey, let's go through and modify, you know, the texture files in Monster Manor and maybe make it like, what would Killing Time look like at uh, 60 frames a second? <laughs> that would be that would be interesting. No, if, if, yeah, I, I mean, if anyone wants to fiddle around with this, um, I could dig up my notes and tell you how loaf files are formatted. Oh, there you go. It's, then it's make not... a GIMP, now if you can make a GIMP plug in that wrote out cell files. Uh, oh man, uh, I can briefly considered that. Um, yeah. Please don't make people use a Mac emulator and 3D O animator. No, 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 no. Because no. that, that's what some people are doing. They're using a Mac emulator oh and 3D O 3D O animator to draw, you know, checkerboards oh and stuff. God. Yeah, I'm I know. So, so I'm so sorry for you people. <laughs> oh, it's, it's that was awful. I mean, even even we didn't like it. <laughs> That was one of the reasons I was hoping to get Kim here, uh, so that you could, uh, like, harsh on that. Harsh on 3DO Animator? Harsh yeah. on 3DO Animator, yeah. <laughs> Although, if it was running on an emulated Mac that's running at 20x speed, maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Well, it'll just crash faster. Well, there's I mean. that, too. Well, yeah, but crashing is not so bad if you can restart quickly. You know, that's... Uh, I mean, that, you know... It's the, it's the iteration time that kills most people. Mm -hmm. tools you know if it's you know if you're gonna crash crash early and, often. and recover quickly yes. <laughs> but yeah i mean we pretty much deal with crashing tools still in game development because hey you're on the bleeding edge you're writing your own tools so yeah 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 there's every now and then come on there ah, i got you a little dancy spider there all right who's next Ha, I dodge you. Well, there you go. Maybe that could be your, your Kickstarter project. You could have a... You're going to do a, an Android port at Monster Manor plus <laughs> a, I think a set of tools for writing 3DO cell files so people could mod their own. I wonder if uh, Electronic Arts would have something to say about that. What? We, we could, well, we certainly couldn't use the original artwork or music files. You have to come up with something well, else. That would, I mean, this the, is not, that would be the point not... of replacing the artwork, uh, wouldn't it? See, because if you replace it, so yeah, I can... I, I, we drew all this ourselves. Total, total conversions, right. hey, that works. People can replace as much as they want, apparently. I mean, that's how Miss Pac-Man came into being. I mean, it's like... Well, yeah. Let's, let's get these. 
those those guys were brilliant you know it's just like hey you still have to buy a pac-man game to do this you just have to plug our board in on top of the other one ah hey mr blue ghost oh so it's kind of like the opposite of pac-man there right because it's like <laughs> <laughs> he's not he's not safe when he's blue. Uh, you know, you this got, is the exit. You got to de-blue him. Well, yeah. obviously. What do you think was behind the blue? Uh, uh, sometimes, <laughs> some, sometimes he's guarding the talisman fragment. Mm. Sometimes he's he's doing that just to switch it up a little bit. Huh? Yep. Okay, nothing else here. No, that's it. All right. Sixty-five, eighty-five. Are you seriously that miserly with health? <laughs> yeah, I am. Actually, you know that little extra. You, know, you never know. Right, what's this? Hmm. All right. Okay, so I think I'm totally explored. Yeah, it looks like I've totally explored. Whoops. Yeah, I see. I'm... See, I'm surprised he... Yeah. So yeah, even at this it. level of graphics, you're almost getting to the territory where I could see somebody in Congress, like, you know, freaking out about, you know, the gore elements of the game <laughs> or something like that. I, in fact, the next the next time we shoot one of these, if you could, like, dig into your archives and grab a copy of um, uh, Night Trap. Yeah. Because I want to do that. I've, okay. Hey, <laughs> get I'm, that out I'm totally way. game for that. <laughs> Whoops! We've interrupted our regularly scheduled yes, program for Night of Trap. The same old, yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of weird. Like, what is considered, you know, unacceptable violence? Because if you think about it, I mean, you know, Three Stooges is unacceptably violent. If you think about what they're actually doing to each other, <laughs> would you want kids to imi imitate the Three Stooges versus? Oh, this? I did. Good luck on this. You know, good luck <laughs> imitating this. <laughs> Oh, I did. I, I mean, were they seriously the worried about kids, you know, going to a sorority, you know, house filled of 30 year old actresses pretending to be teenagers having a <laughs> slumber party or something? Uh, could be. They're playing a video game. The odds of these kids are going <laughs> to. Uh, versus the Three Stooges. It's very easy to imitate. Uh, sadly, yes. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah. From per you know, from personal experience. Personal experience. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Or, you know. Another game we have to do definitely is Return Fire. Uh, Since yeah. we both have history with that. Yes, so, we do. Uh, yes, we do. That one, you can run over people and squish them into blood stains. Which apparently no one had a problem with. By the time that game came out, it's supposed to like Death Race. Whatever. <laughs> I wonder if it's worth doing. Uh, uh, I wonder if it's worth doing um, Return Fire. Without first doing firepower, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can drag up a. You can't play that multi. Well, the, the, is that multiplayer yes, on the same is. Amiga? Uh, oh, on the same Amiga? I don't remember. I don't know how. I don't know how good the Amiga emulators are for the whole. Uh, well, I've got my networking. I still got my three thousand. Heck, I could probably run UAE. I'm sure there's probably a UAE for my Android tablet or whatever that would be. Uh, there is actually. Oh dear. Ah, uh, of course you would know this. Yes. <laughs> Where you're like, I'm going to... Oh, damn. Somebody already wrote one. Already <laughs> wrote one, yes. I don't know enough about emulation techniques, uh, too. I mean, I, I would do like a brute force emulator. It would be slow as hell. Ah. Uh, you know, it's basically you have a, a 64K long table I with mean, all the opcodes yeah. in. Yeah, I've, I've, I've dabbled with wanting to, like, write emulators and, you know, mm -hmm. for th systems I've worked on. Yeah. And the thing I... I, I mean, it's very daunting when you first look at it, but then... After you look at it enough, you realize they're really just plugging modules in. I mean, modules. if you actually look at like what the actual you know like emulation of a system is, this like a lot of it's basically like okay, you have this chip, mm -hmm. and here's how it's inter. You know, they've literally got down to the chip level of like okay, you just have to hook these interrupts up to the you know this this address line up to this, and they have this very well abstracted to the point it's almost like you know circuit emulation. Hmm. Um, and actually, that's the hard thing right now in emulation is like you know doing the old analog games like. They're they're now up to like what they can now emulate on a, on a top of the line computer now like what they could do in about 1973 in terms of discrete logic uh, hmm. instead as opposed to like CPU based stuff. I believe there's like a JavaScript page out there that has a 6502 emulator, 
Oh, um, somebody, somebody has 6502 in Minecraft, dude. It, it, <laughs> emulated at the gate level, basically, at the transistor level. Yep, yep. the same deal. <laughs> ah. hey, but, what, uh, are you in the wall? What? Hey, you only got yourself to blame for that. Oh, there's, oh there's AM. Yeah, and, and it, that's true. I do want to make myself cut. You know, these are actually guys are more intelligent than most modern 3D games I play. In really? terms of, like, sniping you from around the corner. They... It's giving a it's giving a good illusion that they're doing that again. Yeah, I well, it's, 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 it's certainly a good illusion, but I'm pretty sure they're just sidestepping left. Yeah, and they right. just they shoot and then they jump aside. Ah, well, mostly to annoy you. You know, it's like ah, I jumped. The only time you can shoot me is when I'm up in the air. Well, yeah. I'll jump out of the way. Ah, well, well, yeah, but they're just sidestepping. Well, that doesn't really affect Ooh, whether you can hit them up because they have to jump upwards for you to hit them. Form an orderly queue. It's a turkey shoot, man. But, uh, Whoa. yeah, it's, uh... Oh, no. Emulate, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the main trick... One? Of, yeah. Of course, the main trick in emulation, though, is getting the chips, you know. But I'm actually surprised, like, what people have got, you know, pre-built chips for. Like, the, like the, the, the PowerPC 602. That they, uh, I mean, this ARM chip has obviously been emulated. I mean, the trick stuff is, like, the cell engine. Right. And, you know, people have figured this out. Yeah, actually, there's somebody um, on um, 3DO, the, the 3DO Zero Fora uh, asked if I wanted to help out with their emulator, hmm. um, and so I'm not I'm not ignoring you. I just I'm just not sure yet. <laughs> well, the other, actually, well, see, there's actually apparently there's I, I keep reading on MAME. It's like, well, why isn't this why isn't the 3DO emulated in MAME slash mess? And apparently, the one existing emulator that's out there, mm -hmm. um, 4DO. Fr okay, so that's and this is where it gets kind of weird. I well, know. there was not, Freedio. There's Freedio, and apparently the main guys had given some assistance to the Freedio guys. Mm -hmm. But the um, at the time, last time I'd heard about this, I don't know. This might be changing. The Freedio guys published the source, but they put basically a, a little clause in it, and it's not like. It's not it's not a GNU license, which the main guys don't like anyway. Mm -hmm. It's it's basically it says if you ever use any of this code, mm -hmm. we own your we can do anything with your emulator and use it for commercial purposes. Which the main oh, guys so they, don't. They, they all, no, they basically have a poison pill in their source code. And yeah, even that's... though a lot of the stuff that is in there actually came from the main guys already, right. so it's like they can't use any of the stuff they discovered. So they have basically have to write a new one from scratch. Now, 4DO, my understanding is somewhat based on 3DO, but. Uh -huh. It might be different enough that it doesn't follow that for me because I would love to see this in MAME and MESS because there's a there's a bunch of arcade games that are based on 3DO hardware prototypes mm -hmm. and then of course there's actual 3DO and you know the ones that are out there it's like you know it's great that the couple of people that are working on them are working on them but if you get this if you get the the bulk of work that's been done by the the MAME slash MESS guys that would be awesome because I mean they basically have made an artwork of you know making sure the chips are accurate, you know, cycle accurate and yeah, stuff. And, like, the arm that's in here, I'm pretty sure, is already emulated 100% in mess. The, yeah. The arm chip. Yeah, so, yeah, the main guys just have, like, you know, emulation shops right. out to... Out Same to thing here. with, like, the power PC that's used in the uh, the M2. They've done no that. No kidding. Yeah, there's a there's a preliminary M2 driver in main. Um, <laughs> well, what are they using to test it with? I mean, almost nothing was released for it. Uh, well, so they're using the Konami arcade games. Oh. Yes, there's like about there's like five or six of those, um, and they actually get to the boot screen and they do stuff, but they don't have enough information. Mm -hmm. uh, well, they have information, but gotcha. somebody has got to have the desire to go through and do the custom chips. Um, uh. But uh, yeah, that would but it be and it'd also great because then the mess guys could also pick it up and then we could actually run some of the the homebrew slash mm -hmm. unreleased prototypes for m2 that got out into the world so these, so these homebrew things they're, they're actually burn discs and they run on old actual machines m2 hardware yeah i you never I, and, and haven't, you seen, you, haven't you seen my m2 um i've seen a m2 i don't know if i've seen your m2 the, the, the it's, angular it's a, like you know beveled uh boxy thing that was a, yeah that was like a kiosk it's a kiosk system essentially oh okay no i don't and, think i've seen that uh yeah and it's so i can run m's racing um Hmm. Yeah, and uh, and actually, I've been trying to because I actually have some programs, mm -hmm. shall we say, uh, <laughs> stuff that I would love to get running again. I've only gotten video form, but I do have most of the source code for. 
but it means I have to get the M2 development environment up. And the only one that I've ever been able to find online is the frickin' Mac one. Uh, Not the good one that Martin did <laughs> for the PC. That's, uh, I, well, that was never... Was that ever officially published, or is that just an internal thing? That, that I thought... I if I if My understanding was... And this is where we kind of get into Insider. Nah, I don't know if it's Insider now, but probably not. So there was the, the $100 million deal with Panasonic to sell right. M2. Yeah. Um, and that was great. I remember that, remember that day, the trip wanders in. It's like, ha, 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 $100 million. Oh, God, yeah. There's a book around that. Um, <laughs> we, I don't know. Do you want to talk about the original deal that he brought us into the cafeteria for? Uh, that wasn't Panasonic? Oh, no, that? No, that where, really. where he said, oh, we're in the end zone. We're just deciding what dance to do. Oh, I remember that quote, yes. yes. <laughs> there was a third party besides Panasonic part of that deal. And that Kim, remember Kim told you about how that deal went sour? Um, I, the, okay, so what I remember uh, is that, th this looks like one big long spiral. Don't die. Uh, no. <laughs> what I remember Fine. is um, what I'd heard, and this is a rumor I hadn't confirmed, is that they had made some overtures to Sega. Well, that was the to yeah. get bought by to have three D the three D O company bought by Sega. Oh, hello. Yeah, uh, and it went sort sour yeah. because um, Trip would have just been another VP. He wouldn't have been anyone significant. Now that I and so I, yeah, I heard something very similar. To that. Well, I mean, he actually Trip actually told told the entire. Well, you were there for that deal. Where he basically brought the entire uh, company into the cafeteria mm -hmm. and did this. Such as it was. We don't want, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. well, we want. Yeah. Uh, and said, you know, did his normal, don't tell anybody this. Uh -huh. But, which is, of course, he wants somebody to leak this because he wants the 3DO stock to go up. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, you know, you, you don't say right. to everybody, including the lunch lady, um, don't leak this info out. This is really important. Right. Um, so there was a deal. Apparently, there was a deal between Panasonic, 3DO, and Sega. And the idea uh, was Panasonic would manufacture the hardware. Right. Because Panasonic was twice the size of Sony at that point. Mm -hmm. um, Sega would provide all the first party software. So we immediately get Virtua Fighter, Sonic, Sonic. Every, basically everything under the sun. Mm -hmm. At that point. Yes. And, uh, and 3DO was basically the technology company. And so my very, my my what I'd heard about this deal was what went south was, as part of the deal, Trip wanted to basically be president of Sega of America. He wanted mm -hmm. what's his name's job, um, right? Which which is interesting because I also remember reading in many uh, video game magazines at the time, which was really hysterical. Was um, some magazines got wind of it obviously because Trip told right. everybody and yeah, somebody leaked it because he wanted him to. Yeah, <laughs> and. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was the guy? Was it? I want to say Kalinsky was his name. Was Sega? Oh, Saul? No, not Saul Kalinsky. Um, Tom Kalinsky. It sounds about yeah, anyway. right. I don't remember. So he said to the press, and he was like saying, "It's like, oh, Sega is in no way talking to 3DO." And the thing was, from his perspective, he was correct. Mm -hmm. Sega was Sega of America didn't know jack shit about the deal. Uh huh. <laughs> It was uh, because I now this is one was doing this now or? this is now this is where this got to be a really funny story. <laughs> now you remember I had a Saturn at that time. That's right. And I brought it into 3DO. It, brought, it was in the lobby. It was in the lobby. I played uh, many many. Uh, Actually, I had two. One got stolen. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, but I had it, and I was um, I would bring it in, and we play it because it's like, hey, you know, we should see what other people are playing. It was yeah. just kind of fun. And so during lunch hour, we were playing games. I brought knights in to play. Because Knights was like their big game at that time. Yeah, I I, I love that game. In yeah. fact, I have the I, they remade it for the Wii, and I have a copy of that too. Yeah, I heard that kind of was sucky. Hey, finally I'm yet. So I'm playing Knights in the lobby. Mm -hmm. Knock 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 on the door because 3DO had three buildings at that time. We had like yeah. the main yep. building where Trip and the execs were. Mm -hmm. We have the engineers kind of exiled to <laughs> you have like the worker bees right. area, and Studio was on another building, and right. so so. Knock, knock, knock on the glass door there. Mm -hmm. um, I open it. Right. Because uh, I was... you I, and someone I, knocks on the door. Yeah. Right? I was, so I was playing and nobody else was around. Mm -hmm. And it's president of, of Sega Japan. Wait, what, I, time, I, what time of day is this? 
So this is in this was around lunchtime, I guess, and I would eat eating your okay. So this is where it gets really funny. So I didn't know this was President Jacob Sego Japan. Uh huh. It's a Japanese gentleman. He's well dressed in a suit. Uh huh. And um, I'm looking for Trip Hawkins. <laughs> 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 so wait, I have, hang on. <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> I just like, wait, first of all, he's by himself. I don't know if you. I don't know where his little entourage was with him, but this this was because like, I've later asked somebody who that was because <laughs> somebody else had walked by at this point. It was one of the one of the um, what was her name? It was one of the girl engineers. Um, oh, careful with that, uh, Deborah Bennett. I I don't know. That's the first one that comes to mind. But there were. Oh, wait, others. maybe it was no, not um. What was her name? Maria. Maria Tepfer. Yeah, she's not. I re, yeah, she, yeah, she's been married. She's got married since, but yeah. Yeah, I think that was her, and, she, and so I said, you know, oh, he's it's, it's over in the other building. I don't know if they just didn't know their way in or stuff, and they just followed the signs, and so they vaguely saw this, and so it's like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm just wondering, oh my god, it's Google Maps didn't exist back then. Yeah, actually, yeah, because this whole deal kind of went on around this time, right? Right. And I'm just wondering, it's like, did Sega? Th- you know, was one of the reasons Sega went off the deal besides not wanting to give Trip, you know, so yeah, much. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Was one of the reasons was because Sega was kind of, remember Sega around, this was this weird time where Sega was kind of like in the ropes because the whole 32X Sega CD thing wasn't panning out. Right. Saturn wasn't really doing that well. Right. So that had been about the time they would have started looking at the deal. Mm-hmm. Knights had come out basically that time. They got this sudden blip up because they were actually, you know, it was a well-received game. It was selling decently. Mm-hmm. And I'm just wondering, it's like, he's, did they say, it's like, he's like, maybe we can make a go of it. You know, maybe this will be the turnaround of the company. It's like, even the 3DO employees are playing <laughs> our game. <laughs> it's like, oh, because that would have been a great deal. I would think that would have been an awesome deal if, if it had been Sega. Because it could have been, yes, it would have been Sega abandoning their the Saturn mm-hmm. was way early in the Saturn life cycle, yeah. Yeah, about a year earlier than they actually ended up doing with Dreamcast. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was this thing: is like, okay, you would have had, you would have had solved the the hard, the software problem for the 3DO for the M2, right? Because they have you know very strong titles. Remember that was like one word: very strong titles. <laughs> um, which is why Panasonic didn't want to release the console by themselves because it's like we need very strong titles. Uh-huh. Um, so, so and it was like, oh, so that would have solved the, the software problem. Panasonic, because they're now owner owner of the thing, mm-hmm. could have priced the thing very competitively. Yes. As <laughs> cheap cheaper than the, probably the N sixty four. So you got a uh-huh. kick ass development system. On yep. a CD, basically N sixty well more than way more than N sixty four power mm-hmm. on that. And then you got so yeah, it's one of those like, ah, might have been. So it's your fault. And, and a great development well, hey. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's not your fault. Uh <laughs> Hey, well, I mean, we, were wow. playing, we were playing Knights, and it's like, oh, look yeah. at that. It could just as easily been me. I was playing that game too. I thought it was lovely. <clears throat> yeah. I still, I, I like went to the bother of recording the music on cassette tape and like, <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoyed that. Well, now you can buy the soundtrack. Uh, I think it's even on like iTunes or I know you don't probably like iTunes, but it's like you know, <laughs> I assume any other service you could probably buy the Knights because they just re-released it on Xbox Live Arcade in really? its original form. Uh, it's no not. Kidding. It's not like the Wii remake. It's actually like the original thing. I think you can even turn toggle off like Sega Saturn graphics versus like nicely cleaned up 3D oh, that, graphics. That might be look, worth looking into. Oh, you'd have to sign into yeah, Live Arcade, yeah, yeah. wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's but anyways, nice. no, it's it's. No, I, it's, I buckled once. I'll do it again. Don't worry. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's it, that was like one of those deals where it's like it was kind of heartbreaking, and you're like going, ah. Oh. What, what, what was what was that one person's version of like why the deal fell through? What, what was what was her characterization? It's like Trip wanted too much for his hair care products or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Which was which was her way of saying you know it's like you know yeah. he just he just it wasn't good enough for Trip to have a deal a good deal for everybody. Right. He had to have a much better deal. Right. That's one of the reasons why, um, w- appropriate or not, um, I I tend to lump Trip Hawkins and Mitt Romney in the same bucket. They're good haircuts and... Yeah, they're nothing. good haircuts and nothing else. Oh, uh, well. Oh, we're recording this right before the election. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like, this is going to have any... Uh, oh, well, impact. yeah, yeah. If you're... I mean... That, 
voting. Yeah. So I guess you guys can nobody guess who I'm voting for. But oh, hello there. Were you there all the time? It doesn't. Well, it doesn't matter in, in this state because we're in California right now, and there's no chance of our electoral votes going for Mitt Romney in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, but, but I mean, you could you could help you could help Mitt Romney lose harder. Uh yeah well yeah let's not get into the politics portion yeah no no yes the number of listeners is already so small we don't want to risk alienating drive away our our, okay so now I've got the if you're you're a Romney supporter that's okay that's all right although you should look up Joss Whedon's uh have you seen that yeah (laughs) Joss Whedon's wonderful (laughs) wonderful video about the future (laughs) for Romney (laughs) if Romney is elected yeah. Serpentine, serpentine. You should learn parkour. I like <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's like one of those. No, I hadn't. I, I, I no, I hadn't. So it was. Yeah, yeah it was, so I was a... dimly aware that was that there was Sega involved, but it that it fell apart. Well, but I had we were, no. Actual... We were doing demos for Sega. They wanted to see like because this well, was also. Well, sort you of... were attached to M two, so I wouldn't have known about this. Yeah. So we were doing demos for Sega and. Because there was, they had some trepidation about the whole fiasco at E3 where they left a layer off the chip. IBM, oh yeah, IBM's <coughs> uh, you know B guys um, decided to leave a whole layer off the M2 graphics chip. Mm-hmm. It was actually amazing that it did anything at all. But yeah. basically, you, apparently, you, it was just, only the video DACs that actually needed the fifth layer. Well, much. no, it was the setup engine wouldn't work. Oh, so everything had to be set up by the CPU. So the thing like ran like ten times slower than it should in terms of three pushing polygon. Mm-hmm. So you could texture just fine. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why you had a lot of demos of, like, look at the lovely cow texture moving about the screen on one. You know, yeah. Look at how transparency goes in and out and all that Ooh. stuff. And yeah, so it's so smooth. Yeah, <laughs> let's see what um, it's what, so real. Let's see what Les has to say here. <laughs> Your aim may be improving, but every minute brings you closer to death. The keys to success are hard to find, and help is a fragile thing. Keys to success? Yeah. Mm, uh, a very punful, yes. <laughs> Alright, so let's put this away. Ding, ding, a ding, a ding, ding. Come on, there we go. So thy, thy game is over. Wait, is that squished? Is what squished? That's heart looks kind of. No, it's it's beating. Oh, okay. I just. Ooh, yeah, artsy fartsy. <coughs> A beating fung shaded heart. What will they think of next? <laughs> <laughs> so no, so yeah, I heard I heard like something about Sega, and I thought, yeah, no, that would be weird because I mean because they had like tremendous ad campaign at that point yeah the whole welcome to the next level thing and oh yeah their their ads are kind of they were like almost political ads the mocking of the other mascots Uh because well remember cream spinach color yeah full well yeah well sega yeah like well like they stole that from the links um like yeah but no the one first first because remember originally they did the mario sonic thing and they had like you know mario is kind of like this you know you know slow moving ass character Mm -hmm. that's how they kind of Started to come out ahead in the 16-bit war um, before screwing up with the Sega CD. Uh, yeah. But then when the and then the 32X when, when, and then, uh, yeah. Sat, when the Saturn came out, they finally had Knights. They mm-hmm. were like, you know, they they did two ads. One was aimed at PlayStation, where it's like, you know, it's like, hey, Knights, you can fly and all this. Shit. Well, like, it matters. <laughs> but then they, they had like it's like a kid dropping a PlayStation out the window, going, "Fly, play thing, fly." <laughs> And then another one, I think, was related to Mario, you know, making fun of, you know, Mm -hmm. which, you know, it's like, no, Mario's full 3D as well. It's actually more 3D, but, you know, it didn't have that. You know, that was their their whole thing. It was like, you know, speed was the Sonic thing, and this was like the the freedom of flight with the, that flight, weird flight controller with the knob. With the knob, yeah. But, yeah. That was uh, and then of course that which, which which had a texture on it that would basically rub the skin off your thumb. Yes. Well, yeah. If you played it obsessively, you sure. Played, yeah. <laughs> but yes. Well, we'll definitely have to do an M2 uh, thing uh, wow. where yeah, I bring my M2 and. Uh, sure. It's, it, but that's right. They have put in TSC. We can capture on this hardware. Hmm. Yeah. I think it, I think mine also has a VGA out. So because yeah. it's a kiosk oh. thing. So. Oh, but I'll have to get us. I'll have to get a new gadget for that. I don't know. Well. I don't. I think it's. I think it's probably set to only do 480p. So, mm. so, 
at best. So, we'll see. Well, we got through this one without dying. Yay! So, yay. <laughs> so uh, we'll be back next time with the next map, and uh, we'll see you then. Thanks maybe, for joining us. Or maybe Night Trap. Or maybe, or maybe Night Trap. But, well, I mean, we're putting them... I've got the the, the, the channel set up. So, okay, yeah, all right. But, We'll see what happens next. Tune in next time. Who knows? We'll have a new president. Maybe it'll be sewer Maybe. shark. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs>